Well, praise God, everybody, and welcome to today's broadcast. I'm Apostle Craig Banks, and we are so glad that you have joined us for today's edition of The Heart of a Servant. I want you to know something. The Lord is totally committed to conforming each one of us into the character or building his character, the character of Christ Jesus in each one of us. That's a process, and you have to allow him to do it. Today, we want to share a message with you. Uh, we're calling this All In. We've been sharing with you about compassion, and when compassion fills our hearts, we begin to discover that we must be all in. If we want to see 100% of the things of God manifesting in our life, we have to give ourselves 100% to him. Not this weekend warrior thing, or whenever I need you, I'll show up and I'll call on you. But all in, it means everything, the totality of my life. Lord, I'm all in. And it does not matter what comes my way. It will not move me from that spot of being all in. When that happens, something marvelous takes place in our hearts, takes place in our minds, because nothing else matters but the kingdom of God. In this brand new year of 2018, I want you to know that God is doing a new thing. He's requiring us to get in alignment with kingdom order or the divine order of his grace. We live according to the kingdom principles. When we do, we'll find that, yes, we are all in, and we'll begin to encourage one another to be all in. Let's go into this message. I know it will revolutionize your life. Amen. <laughs> A heart for this generation. We need your heart, your whole heart. We need your heart. The heart of the ideal servant. Everybody said amen. All right, look at your outline. Uh, we're continuing in this uh, study that we've been sharing with you about compassion. Uh, everybody say compassion is a command and not a suggestion. And we've got to really get that cemented in our hearts because uh, this is not a uh, every once in a while thing. This is daily compassion. And the truth is that we are born of God. So we are born of compassion. Amen. So it's not like you're trying to find compassion. You are born of compassion. Compassion is in you. God is compassion. And the Bible says in Ephesians that we are to be imitators of God as dear children. Act just like him. So if we look at the life of our Lord Jesus in the Gospels, we find that uh, he was moved with compassion. We've got to be moved with compassion. The reason things are not happening in our cities, uh, I believe, uh, is because in many cases, the saints have shut down their compassion. When my compassion shuts down, I become selfish. And I only think of me and my agenda. And that's the only thing that matters. And if I stay on that track, I will develop this kind of mindset that because I thought the thought, then that's, that's the way God thinks. And there are people that think twisted thoughts. They have nothing to do with Scripture. And they, try, they think God is backing them up. Now, he's never going to deviate from his word. Amen. And he's not, uh, he's not past correcting you. I said he's not past correcting you. God is not of anybody's political party. And I'm saying that in a broad swipe because uh, there are other nations that have political parties. And different saints in different nations think God is a part of their party. God is God. He's sovereign. He's above all that. He has one agenda, and that's his kingdom. And we've got to receive his kingdom agenda. And we've got to develop a kingdom mindset. And the kingdom mindset is going to get you to uh, start talking according to the kingdom. Amen. Amen. You can't live by your feelings. If you're going to walk in love, you're going to walk in compassion. You cannot be living by your feelings because uh, compassion will say, give. 
and your feelings say, oh, no. Compassion says, give this amount. And you're like, "Uh uh-uh. I'll do this, but not that. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Amen. So we never know what's on the other end of our obedience. We never know. And and we try to uh, we try to figure out and rationalize all these things. But something the Lord told me years ago, he said, son, before I ever ask you or instruct you to do something, I've already gone ahead of you and counted all the cost. Everything that you could have imagined, you could have figured into the equation to come up with your supposed justifiable answer. He said, I've already thought it out before I ever ask you. So when I say it to you, just know it has been completely run through. And you can do it. So do it. It saves you headache. Because you can spend a lot of time arguing with the Lord. Go to bed. Get up in the morning. Still arguing over the same thing. Trying to get the Lord to talk. Maybe it's just been me. Amen. All right. Everybody say compassion. Uh, let's run through the scriptures here. First Samuel. You know where that's at, right? First Samuel uh, 22. This is, of course, when David was on the run from Saul. <laughs> and I mean, you know, you can do some good things and look like look like all hell's coming after you. Yeah, well, that's that's the nature of of the the business that you've been called to, kingdom business. First um, Samuel twenty two verse one and two. David therefore departed from there and escaped to the cave of Adullo. So when his brothers and all his father's house heard it, they went down there to him, and everyone who was in distress, everyone who was in debt, everyone who was discontented, gathered to him. So he became captain over them. And there were about 400 men with him. Hmm. They finally had a, or suddenly had a realization that the same Saul that was after David wanted them dead too. Because it included his brothers. And his brothers stood in the house in front of their daddy and in front of Samuel when he came with the, uh, with the horn of oil to anoint the next king. And he passed over every one of them. God said, nope, 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 nope. And even before David killed Goliath, you know the story, uh, he said, what's going to happen to the man that kills this, this uncircumcised uh, uh, Philistine? And his brother came up and said, I know what you're all about. Who keeping those few little sheep, you know, like all like like you down here, we we up here fighting. Y'all wasn't fighting. They were just dressed up for fighting. They were scared. The Bible said the whole army was scared when Goliath came out and breathed his threats. But the one that hated on him had to come to him here and submit. God was establishing his agenda with David, giving him his vision for Israel. I'm saying this for a reason, because most saints go to church and don't know that you go because of a vision. God assigns you to a vision. There are a lot of people dreaming dreams, but don't have God's vision. You can have service and never have God's vision, and all you have is service. And you got to come back the next time for another service, another service, and you can get old having services, but never tapping into the vision of God. The vision of God will unlock what's in you. He's deposited things in you, and when you are connected to the vision, there's an anointing associated with that vision that is designed by God to do a lot of things. And one of those lot of things is to unlock certain seed in you. Unlock certain potential. Open your eyes to things that you don't even know are there. 
And it all points toward uh, his kingdom and him equipping you uh, to or, or, or developing you to walk out kingdom principles. That's a game changer. Amen. So they had to come to him. Okay, go to First Chronicles. We're talking about compassion. You got to be all in. First Chronicles 12. And look at verse 16. I know some say, well, you read that before. I'm reading it again. <clears throat> verse 16. Then some of the sons of Benjamin and Judah came to David at the stronghold. Now, keep in mind, Benjamin, uh, as one person put it, Ben-jamin. Uh, that's for all the musicians. <laughs> but... Um, Saul is, is from the tribe of Benjamin. So they were all committed to Saul. But something happened, and a lot of them were leaving, defecting to David. Some of the sons of Benjamin and Judah came to David at the stronghold, and David went out to meet them and answered and said to them, If you have come peaceably to me to help me, my heart will be united with you. But if to betray me to my enemies... Since there is no wrong in my hands or there is no violence in my hands, may the God of our fathers look and bring judgment. In other words, the God of covenant. Y'all heard to say, may the Lord watch between me and thee. You know, that's covenant. So don't, don't grin in my face and gun me down. Then the spirit came upon Amaziah. Amaziah chief of the captains, and he said, we are yours, O David. Wait a minute. Is that all in? Would you say that's all in? Now, he's speaking for everybody. He's the captain, so he can speak for the group. He said, we are yours. So that means whatever you order, we follow the order because we're all in. We are are all in, we are yours. Then he says, we are on your side. So, in other words, well, let me read the rest of it, because he says, peace, peace to you, and peace to your helpers. The Jews would, uh, would say, uh, when they said peace, peace, you know, now they, well, it would say shalom, shalom. That, and, and one of the reasons they said it twice was because they were saying peace, wholeness, wellness to you spiritually and physically. And that covers every dimension of all areas. In other words, peace, peace, shalom, shalom, everything is working. And so this is what these guys are saying. We're saying shalom, shalom to you. In other words, there's not even a thought to cross our mind to do anything contrary. We're all in. And if we're on your side or we're by your side, that means your fight is ours. Your vision is ours. If you, if you say, give the order, you no, know, left, right, left, right, left, right, then we go left, right, left, right. We're all in sync. When everybody else is ready to fight, you ain't going to find us dragging our sword. Well, you know, I've had a tough time. See, we don't like to hear this stuff in church. We like, we like to hear sermons that move us and groove us and make me feel good. And I, I got a promise from God. God's finna bless me. He's getting ready. Oh, the preacher looking. He looking this way. He got that look. I've seen that look before. That's when they get ready to prophesy. I've been needing a word from God. And then you get mad because he went to the person right next to you. <laughs> or she. So, peace, peace to you and peace to your helpers. For your God helps you. Verse 23. Now, these were the numbers of the divisions that were equipped for war and came to David at Hebron to turn over the kingdom of Saul to him according to the word of the Lord. 
the word of God, the will of God, caused all these men, all these people to shift from where they were and with their present mindset and all attention focused on what he was doing with David. He's establishing his vision for Israel with David and he was shifting all these people that could fight. They could fight, but they had no vision. So you, without a vision, you could be fighting and find out you fought the wrong fight. There's a lot of folks say so struggling with them. I'm, I'm, I've been wrestling with the devil. For what? That's a, that's a little local penny ante devil. And what you should be contending about is over here. Pulling down strongholds. But that little thing got you occupied. Yeah, I've been dealing with this for the last six months. Well, six months, you got to ask the Lord to give you back. Okay. Did you know one of the most precious commodities on this planet is called time? If you don't value it, you'll be subtly moving yourself away from the position for God to restore the years. The years, that's time. That's time. Wow. Who was it? Uh, was it Hezekiah? God gave 15 years. He sent a word, sent a prophet in, say, you don't straighten up and fly right. Kind of paraphrasing Craig's version. Straighten up and fly right. You, you're going to die. Because you haven't straightened up and, and flown right, you're going to die. The prophet walks out, goes across the porch, leaving. God said, turn around and go back. Because he had turned his face to the wall and repented. And, and the Lord, just like that, turn around, go back in there and tell him, I'm giving you 15 years. And here's the proof. The sundial. The sundial went back. So God restored or bent the time on his behalf. Gave him 15 years. Who can stand 15? Look at verse uh, 33. And of Zebulun, there were 50,000 who went out to battle, expert in war, with all weapons of war, stout-hearted men who could keep ranks. Verse 38. All these men of war who could keep ranks came to Hebron with a loyal heart to make David king over all Israel. A loyal heart means I'm all in. And I'd asked the Lord, you know, why, why does it seem to be this is taking longer. And he said, I'm driving home a point. All in. Before a bridge is built, they are taking uh, steel girders and driving them down into a place that you won't, won't ever see. And they're driving them and driving. And then when it's ready, then they set up pillars and the bridge rests on the pillars. All in is the steel girders. That bridge won't move. Amen. It's built to have a little sway in it, but that's the top side. Amen. You are built to not sway. That's what God is building in us. That's what, that's what he's doing with us. Spirit man... Oh, you, you're steady and strong. But it's our soul. We have to get our minds renewed. And we get influenced by so many other things. And those other things causes us to shift a little bit. And James said, you're like a ship tossed with the wind. Anybody ever been on a ship? 
one of those cruise ships or something like a boat on water. It don't have to be a lot of wind blowing. Depending on what you've had to eat and how big that thing is. <laughs> Amen. So when you're all in, the vision is taken personally. All these folks came to David. This is what I want to drive home. They came to David. They took this personally. Now, let me throw this out to or put this to you. When they came to David, they didn't just come and sit and twiddle their thumbs. They were proactive in their thinking. They were proactive. When, when uh, David's family came to him, you read later on in the scriptures, uh, uh, you know, the history with David, his nephews were just as lethal as he was because that anointing came upon him. I mean, it flowed off of him. All those that connected to that vision, that anointing came upon them. Some of the same ones that were broke, busted, and disgusted, they became some of his mighty men. And when his son tried to steal the kingdom from him, some of the advisors said, uh, your, your dad and his group, they're old, but you don't want to fall with them. They are killers. They are lethal killers. They didn't believe him. He took the advice of his friends and got them all killed. <laughs> but that anointing came, okay. When David got older, they all went out to battle. And the Bible says that there were some giants, the sons of the giant. Talking about Goliath. He had children. And they had a vendetta. We're going to get him. And then he had a brother that had it in for David. And the Bible says, when David looked, here's this giant standing. And David's arms became heavy. Why? He looking at Goliath again. This is his son. Looked just like his daddy. You ever dealt with something and you knew it was dealt with and then later on you look up and look like, here it is again. No, you killed that one. This is an offspring. If you don't realize it's an offspring, your arm will go like, oh, man. And the Bible says that his nephew, David's nephew, took him out. And they told David, you can't go out. You're the light of Israel. You can't go out. We don't want the light snuffed out. We don't want the vision to end. They took him out. Giant killers. They were hiding at first. Now they come out, the giant killer was already there. I hope y'all are getting this. So when you're all in, the vision is taken personally, your particular part as well as the overall vision. Because Proverbs 29 and 18 says what? Where there is no, you got it on your paper. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keeps the law, happy is he. So when we all in, we understand that our actions on and off the court, including our private life, affects the whole family. I said it affects the whole family. Amen. Even if ain't nobody's looking, nobody sees and knows what you did or what you're doing. Compassion causes you to think and live outward. Shutting up your compassion reverses it. All you think about is you. And you're creating a little small world to live in if that's the way you, you're functioning. A small world don't have enough supplies. So you're going to always be wanting. Amen. Now, what I wanted to get to was part here about connecting to the vision. Everybody say connect to the vision. If y'all could pull up those uh, components of the, of the vision because you've been, you've been assigned to a vision here. Amen. Well, praise God. I trust that you were blessed by that message. There's much more to come and we want you to stay tuned. We really appreciate all of you joining us every week for this broadcast. We thank God for 
the ability to be on the airwaves. The Word of God will revolutionize your life if we will get beyond just hearing with our ears and receive it in our heart and let the Word move things around and even move things out that need to go because God wants us to be all in. You were made by God to be all in. As I said a moment ago, there's so much more to come. We want you to tune into our broadcasts that are coming up after this. Tremendous things will be imparted to you, and we want you to be all that God wants you to be and bring glory and honor to his name. Before we leave, I want to encourage you, if you have not become a partner with us, do so. Your partnership giving helps us to continue to reach around the globe uh, via this TV station and through the internet and those means of getting the word of God out. Thank you for becoming a partner, and we really appreciate you. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray for each person that is listening to this broadcast, and in the name of Jesus, I pray that you help each one to become all in with you with your kingdom assignment and that they will never falter or waver that the eyes of their understanding will be enlightened they'll know the hope of your calling and they'll realize and understand with all the saints what is the what are the riches of the glory that you have deposited in each one of us that our lives will indeed be a praise unto the glory of your grace be exalted in their life and we stop the hand of the enemy against them and i pray that they are strengthened with might in their inner man They'll never move from the place that you've assigned them. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, again, thank you so much for joining us for the heart of the servant. The Lord Jesus wants you to know, yes, you are a son, you are a daughter, but he wants his heart reproduced in you. And when that happens, the glory of God is going to come bursting out of your spirit, man, and transform the world you live in. You're a game changer. Receive the heart of the ideal servant. We'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us for The Heart of a Servant, an outreach ministry of Canaan Christian Center in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. If you are in the Pine Bluff area, we'd love for you to join us on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. for our United Prayer on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. and for our midweek service on Wednesday night at 7. We would also like to give a special thank you to all of our covenant partners. If you are interested in becoming a covenant partner, please visit our website or send us an email. We are Canaan Christian Center, praying that you have the heart of the ideal servant. Servant.